Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at this 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Vatwerk. I'm excited. I've looked at a lot of batteries on this channel, but I have not done any 200 amp hour batteries of this uh, case form factor yet. And they've been asking me for a few months. I just haven't had the time and I'm finally starting to get back into it. So this will be the usual procedure. We'll do a capacity test and then we'll tear it down and see how it's built inside. So taking a look at the front of the case, this is model number LM12200K. This is advertised as having low temp protection for both the charge and discharge. Looking at the top here, we have some basic parameters. It's got a max continuous charge and discharge rate of 200 amps. We've got the standard epoxy terminal studs here, and this included the typical M8 bolt and plastic covers. And on the left and right, we have some pretty strong nylon handles which is good for carrying this battery because it does weigh in at just under 50 pounds. You know, I hear a lot of people saying these cases are cheap and really they are, it's just a plastic box, but it's just very well designed and the size profile is pretty nice. It's actually going to be a bit sad to have to cut it open. And we've got a fairly basic product manual that came with it. Same specifications we already talked about here, voltage, amperage, uh, 48.5 pounds, 200 amp continuous charge and discharge. Uh, recommended charge is 0.2 C or 40 amps and then the low temp protection should function at 0 degrees Celsius for charging and negative 20 degrees Celsius for discharging and you can connect a maximum of 10 of these batteries in parallel and you can connect up to four in series for a 48 volt system. This battery just finished charging. I used this Ames 12 volt 75 amp charger to get the job done and I'm going to be using the space heater for the load since this is a 200 amp hour battery. Uh, this space heater should put approximately a 0.4 C rate, I believe, on the battery. All right, so we're hovering at about 912 watts at 70 amps currently. All right, so our test has concluded here. The BMS and the battery shut down, and our final capacity is 202 amp hours. Typically, I can get these batteries open pretty easily using the putty knife method and just sort of slide it under. However, being a larger case, this plastic is a bit thicker and it was actually starting to bend my putty knife, so going to have to resort to a flat tip screwdriver. Standard disclaimer applies, you should not be disassembling these batteries. Oh man, that's on there pretty good. All right, there we go. All right, so there's our battery pack down in there. We've got our wire with this heat protective wrap around it, and I did pull it back over here. I cut this off a little bit. And there are a pair of conductors in each one of these, and these are six gauge silicone insulated wires. So we have a pair of number sixes, and they go out to a lug here, which they are crimped on and then bolted to the inside of this terminal. All right, and there's our battery. Guys, this is built very cleanly. Uh, so we do have four leads here. So this one must actually contain four conductors instead of two. The positive definitely contains two. And again, how nicely routed they are up to these four posts on the BMS. Each one is covered in silicone adhesive. The same with the battery side of the BMS. The four conductors come out. They're going down to a crimped lug here. And that lug is affixed with a locking nut. I've not seen any of these batteries that I've torn apart so far using uh, the nuts with nylon, I don't know what you call, nylon bushings, nylon locking mechanisms. Uh, I do see on the BMS, I see one temperature sensor here, which is going down into the battery. And I also see a second one over here going down into the battery. So here's the nut that was on there. It's not a serrated flange nut, but it is a flange nut and it does have this locking bushing. and. This was tightened down so tight, I was actually concerned about breaking the stud while I was taking it off. And you can see the ring terminal here, the lug. Guys, I am very impressed at how well this thing is built. These bus bars are huge. They look to be aluminum. I'm pretty sure they're aluminum. And just look at how it's attached. It's just done perfectly. The cells have what appears to be neoprene foam insulating between them. They are wrapped with two wrappings of this uh, strapping tape. The balancing leads are wrapped in spiral wrap. They are nicely routed down the center of the battery. We have foam about the top and the bottom, both to hold these wires into place, a nice channel for the wires to flow through, and also to prevent blocking of these vents. So that way there is support on the top of the battery, but the vents are not obstructed should the vents need to function. 
On the left hand side here we can see where the two number six wires are terminated. Again these are crimped lugs. They do appear to be crimped pretty well and uh, they are attached at two separate points. So because this is a 200 amp hour battery these are 100 amp hour cells. So we have two cells in parallel here which is why this is connected the way it is. So these two are in parallel, these two are in parallel, and then this bar up here is connecting those two parallel groupings into series. So we have eight 100 amp hour cells giving us 12.8 volts, 200 amp hours. Let's see if we can locate one of the QR codes here. There we go. So there's a close up of the QR code based on the beginning being 04Q. I'm fairly certain these are EVE cells and they are 320 watt hours, which is a 100 amp hour cell. Uh, several months ago, one of these batteries was reviewed by another YouTuber, uh, Mr. Prouse, and there was a lot of like soldering of conductors inside. There was soldering of the lugs. And one of the takeaways from that video is this company very quickly said, okay, we're going to look into this and see how we can improve this better. And that's what I love to see is when something isn't done as good as it could be and the company actually listens to customer feedback and improves their product to make it better for everybody else. All right, so taking a closer look at this BMS, I do see a small model number down here, but I can't quite make it out. So uh, I did remove the screws from the bottom of this plate. So here we go. This is model number PCM-L04S260. So I'm going to guess, this is my guess, that the 4S means 4 series and 260 probably means 260 amps. It is fantastic actually to see the BMS overrated for the purpose. So this battery is rated for a 200 amp discharge and this appears to be a 260 amp BMS. I can't really make out a part number on these transistors which is kind of interesting. There actually appears to be no marking on them whatsoever so they may be just a generic part. You know, there's not too much to see. It's your standard run-of-the-mill BMS. Uh, we're going to test the low temperature charge protection of this BMS. My eye charger is charging at approximately 1.5 amps. The negative is on the power side of the battery, and the positive is on the positive conductor. I have this glass of frozen ice water and some uh, orange rock salt. I'm going to dunk this sensor in and see if it stops the charge. Let's try this other temperature sensor. Let's check our temperature here with this separate sensor and see what we're actually at. So we're down to negative three degrees Celsius. I've got both sensors in the water and it's still charging. So that would really suck to have this fail this particular test because everything else is built so well with this battery. So we've passed negative five degrees Celsius and the low temperature charge protection still has not tripped. We're gonna try this third one that was on the FET transistors just for fun and see what happens here. Nope, not getting anything on that one either. <sighs> All right, guys, we're going to do one more thing here to test the sensor. I want to try to get this super cold, uh, well below zero degrees Celsius. So you can see I've zip tied both sensors to the sensor for the thermometer, which is located over here. I'm going to begin charging the battery, and I'm going to spray the sensor with this computer duster stuff, which should cool it off pretty quick. So we've now got the sensor at negative 31 degrees Celsius and you can see the thing is still charging. So I really don't know what the deal is with the low temperature charge protection and why so many companies still cannot get this right. They took the battery they had originally built that had soldered lugs and soldered balance leads and things like that and they fixed all those problems and this is a phenomenally well built battery. I really like this battery but they broke the one thing that worked on the original battery. So I went back to Mr. Prouse's review video and you can make out the model number of the BMS if you look close enough when he disassembles it. So these BMS's in both batteries are built by Smartech and his battery had model number PCM L05S100-G23 and I was able to pull up that BMS on the company's website and it very specifically says charge discharge high and low temperature protection can be set as required and it includes a download to a PDF specification sheet which backs up that statement. My battery has model number PCM 04S260-J03. Now I was able to find that on the company's website as well and it says overcharge, over discharge, over current, temperature protection ETC. So it doesn't say high and low temperature protection like the other BMS does. It doesn't define what temperature protection means. The three words that precede temperature protection start with over. So my assumption is it means over temperature protection. It also does not include the download link to a PDF specification sheet like the other one does. So I do think selection of this BMS on the uh, company's behalf was probably a mistake misunderstanding these specifications. 
However, that's not an excuse because the company should absolutely be testing their batteries with the claims they are making. They should have found this when they tested this battery. You know, as I've said before, temp protection is not a deal breaker for me. This battery is exceedingly well built. It's $6.99 on Amazon and there's a $35 coupon if you're interested in purchasing one. That's still a very good price, but you need to understand that even though this says low temp charging protection on it, it does not have low temp charging protection. And while we're on the topic of the price, there are two versions of this battery. This is the plus version and there's also the regular version. The regular version has a 100 amp BMS. The plus version has the 200 amp BMS. So I don't know what BMS is in the regular. Perhaps the regular version of the battery has the same BMS as the one Mr. Prouse tested. So I will check with the manufacturer and see what they have to say on this, but I do want to get this video uploaded so I'm not going to wait for a response. When I hear something back, I will leave it down in the comment section of this video. Please don't forget to hit that like button before you go. It helps out these videos tremendously. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave those as well. And thanks for watching.